Hi folks, today we're looking at Steve Lukather's faux slide technique. Let's see it in action. So this is a sound that's fascinated me forever. I first heard it when I was a student at ACM and one of our tutors played um, Brush with the Blues by Jeff Beck to the class. And I was just hooked. He's got that whole kind of blues harp, faux slide sound to his playing, but I didn't know how he was doing it. Thankfully, another tutor at ACM at the time was the late, great Michael Caswell who was a master of the Whammy Bar and also happened to be a huge fan of Jeff Beck and also of Steve Lukather and Michael Landau. So he kind of showed me a few of the basic techniques and, and gave me access to that sound and then it's since become a, a fairly big part of my playing as well. Okay, so in my mind there are three things that we can do to help us impersonate slide players. The first is that we can scoop into notes using the bar. Okay. This involves depressing the whammy bar before you hit the string, which obviously we're used to doing things after we've struck the note, but no, we have to push down, play the string, and then let the bar return to pitch. And there's two ways that we can do this. We can either let the bar return to its resting position at the speed that the strings pull it back, which is pretty quick, or we can control it more and make it more gradual. That was a bit lumpy. That's a bit better. Um, which kind of simulates a slower slide. And the second thing we can do is something that it sounds so douchey, I apologize. Uh, Bi directional vibrato, I couldn't think of a better way to coin what I meant, but all I'm talking about here is that. Um, Whereas usually if we play a note, what's happening is we have our pitch, which is the pitch of the unbent string. And as we add vibrato, we are pushing it sharp and then returning to pitch like that. When we add vibrato to a bent note, we have facility to not only go sharp from the original pitch, but also go flat. So in other words, if this is our pitch, we can go above it and below it. And some players will use this not only as an effect to um, add vibrato to, at the end of a bend, but as vibrato in itself. So if we think about someone like Brian May, he will play a pre-bend and add vibrato and, and then not come off that pitch either. So there's, there's no bend element involved really. It's just to give his vibrato a more kind of vocal quality. And we have the ability to do that really easily with the, uh, with the whammy bar. Okay, so what you wanna do is, again, practice kind of trying to simulate the speed and the width of uh, a finger vibrato when a string is bent and you're trying to go evenly both sides of whatever your kind of desired pitch is, okay? So you're not just pushing down, you're not just pulling up, you're doing both. You're pushing down and then you're pulling up, pushing down, pulling up. Okay, that's number two. Okay, so number three is sliding off notes. So for example, so what I did there was, on the second note, which was this C sharp, upon striking the string, I depress the bar, drop it by a half step, and what that also does is kind of provide a little scoop into the next note as the bar returns to pitch. So very slowly, it's gonna sound a bit weird slow. And the amount that we're kind of um, pushing down on the bar is supposed to be controlled enough that we are loosely hitting a pitch there. I'm trying to get like a semitone lower than my fretted note. 
Um, otherwise, it sounds okay, uh, but it sounds more like a whammy bar and less like a slide. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is go through a couple of licks to help you apply these techniques in a more musical way. So the first one is gonna sound like this. Okay. Uh, we are gonna be based in pretty much exclusively E. And again, as with a lot of the stuff we've been doing recently, we're kind of thinking dominant chords. So we are thinking, I guess, E mixolydian, or um, in this case, it's mostly kind of E major pentatonic. So we start with a scoop with the bar. So we're pressing the bar down first. And as we hit the 12th fret of the uh, G string, we're gonna basically continue from where the bar is left off and then keep bending with our fingers. So we get this continuation of, it starts with a bar scoop, and then as this hits pitch, we then carry on and bend up a further half step with our fingers. So we get, okay? Um, which gives the impression of a longer slide. When we're at pitch, we're going to grab the 12th fret of the B string with our ring finger. And then we're going to add that bi-directional vibrato uh, that we talked about earlier. Try and visualize a slide player when you're doing this. Slide players will move either side of whatever their kind of targeted fret is, a sort of equi width. And that's the same thing you're gonna be doing. So. We're then gonna repeat that bending idea twice. And then we get so for this uh, last part of the lick, we are gonna play the 12th fret of the D string, which is basically like the flat seven, and we're gonna be pushing the bar down so that it drops a half step to the major sixth. Um, as a kind of byproduct of releasing the bar, we're gonna get a little scoop into the next note, which is the 14th fret of the A, but that's kind of not really super deliberate. And then we're gonna have, again, a scoop into the final note, which is the 14th fret of the D string. So very slowly. So we'll get this. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is essentially exploiting this very simple shape at the 12th fret, which is an E major triad. We have the 12th fret of the B, 13th fret of the G, and 14th fret of the D. And there's just a couple of different ways that we can articulate this. So for example, we could do that, where we are playing the 12th fret of the B, dipping the bar, and then scooping into the next note on the 13th fret of the G, and then adding a vibrato to the 14th fret of the D. Okay, and sometimes the effect can kind of be heightened by letting some of these notes ring together. You don't have to be super clean with it all the time. Okay, so that's something where you can, there's not like one lick in that position, there's lots of different ways that you could do it. Um, it's just a case of experimenting and seeing what works best for you. What you'll generally find with this stuff is that it is kind of a balanced thing where you don't necessarily want to do that on every single note because it gets too much and it doesn't sound like a slide player. We're trying to think about the idea of how you would connect phrases crossing different strings while you're playing with a slide. So sometimes you are going to be uh, scooping into a note. Sometimes you're not, and it's kind of striking that balance between the two to make it sound kind of authentic. Okay, the last phrase is a little bit more complicated. It goes like this. Okay, uh, we're kind of joining a couple of ideas together at this point. So we start with a scoop into the 14th fret of the uh, B string, which is, in this case, the uh, major sixth. We're then playing the 13th fret of the G and the 12th fret of the B. And those notes are untouched, just as they are. And then we jump to the back to the 13th fret of the uh, G string. 
and we drop it a half step with the bar. Okay? So again, we have that thing here where by dropping one note with the bar, kind of means we scoop into the next, so we get... Okay, finishing up on the 13th fret of the G. And I'm kind of deliberately letting stuff ring together a little bit more to get a bit more of that slide sound. Then we have the same phrase we had earlier, which is that dip on the 12th fret of the D, uh, 14th fret of the A, and then 14th fret of the D with the vibrato. And then I just finished it with that, which um, you can kind of do a ghost note at the front of this, which is uh, just momentarily hitting the 12th fret of the low E string. And then we're doing that thing again where we scoop into the note, but then we keep bending. And then finish with a vibrato added to the 12th fret of the E. So we go. Okay folks, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Um, if you are enjoying this series of videos, please consider supporting me via my Buy Me A Coffee page in the link below. It's like a much more informal version of Patreon. And if you're new here, um, please subscribe for more videos like this. I definitely would like to go deeper with this technique. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna do at some point a video on some Jeff Beck-isms and definitely also some Jimmy Herring-isms. So we get some of that blues harp stuff happening as well. Hope you guys have a great week and I will see you all next Sunday.